A shameful part of Canada's history is the basis of a new children's book. Mark Sakamoto joins us now with more on Shizue's path. And this is a personal story for you because it's based on the story of your great aunt, who was a Japanese Canadian during the Second World War. It's even more personal than that. Thank you very much for having me. Um, in the sense that it started as my own children, sort of, you know, their school was being arrested. They stopped going to school under mm -hmm. very different circumstances, obviously, pandemic, during yes. the pandemic. And I was sort of thinking about, you know, how do I make sense of all this? What's in my familial past that I could sort of draw inspiration from or strength from to offer to my to my own children as they were going through this? And there I found my, my great aunt just sort of right under my nose. And her story really, um, you know, gave birth to this. Right, because she was taken from school. Again, under very different yes, circumstances yes. during the Second World War, <clears throat> as all Japanese Canadians were interned, um, she was a bright, uh, young uh, girl on the West Coast, and she was forcibly moved uh, inland 100, 100 kilometers into, and she was moved into Alberta where, you know, she started um, sugar beet farming. She was literally gone from, you know, grade two to pulling beets out of, uh, out of the ground. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we have some photos from, from the book as well, which is just out today, like published today. Today's the day, it's, exactly. And, <laughs> and, and I, I like how you used it, so it's not an aunt figure, it's, it's a grandmother figure yeah. telling her granddaughter. And it, it's kind of like a, a comforting way to tell a very dark story. Yeah, thanks for that. I, I, I think what I tried to do was exactly that, kind of make a, a dark story accessible. and and not scary, not sort of, I don't want to shy away from the darkness, but also introduce a lot of light into the story. And Shizue's own path was actually very hopeful at the end of the day. I mean, she went through a dark period in, in her life, um, but she drew strength from it and really went on to help a lot of people uh, mm -hmm. throughout her life. Right, uh, and, and you kind of share that knowledge in, in the book. Um, and beautiful illustrations here. Let's give a shout oh, out to the illustrator. Goodness. Yeah, Rachel Wada uh, is just, she, she so beautifully brought this prose to life, I think, and, and used, there, I, we used a lot of um, thoughts about ripples of compassion and water, and Rachel just really took that, and uh, I think the illustrations are just stunning. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because it's 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 kind of the grandmother's way of of passing on. Okay, you need to know your darkness to, to know, know your, your light. light. Yeah, you know, in a way, I sort of feel like my aunt co-wrote this book. She left as I was researching. Um, she left a lot of paintings and poetry that she did herself, and often she sort of came back, she kept on coming back uh, to ripples and water and how you can really have a little drop can, you never know where that ripple of compassion can, can mm -hmm. go. And here it's it's manifested itself in the book, just out today. Out today, yes. I, hope, uh, I hope young children can, can get it and I hope that their parents can read it to them and it can spark some conversations. Mm -hmm. Good day for school libraries to have it as well, <laughs> right? We'll put that post, post out there. So she's the ways path. We'll have more on the links to uh, to where to get the book and uh, and more on Mark. Thanks very much for coming in and chatting with us. This is uh, you know you've made your ripple of change with this. Oh, thank you very yeah. much. I appreciate it. Okay, we'll be back with uh, more morning live right after this.